Hi, I'm Chris Bowman with the USPA Certified Polo Instructor Program. Today we're going to go over our Play Safe lesson pre-check. I have Kylie Sheehan from Team USPA to assist me. One of the first things that we'd like to be aware of when we are going to teach a, a, a polo lesson is our safety of our field. We want to think, consider several things. We want to make sure there's no machinery on the field. Um, we want to make sure all dogs are tied up. We want to make sure that there isn't any debris or any holes or downed limbs that the horses haven't been used to before. Uh, the second area that we'd like to talk about is how the horse is turned out for the lesson. None of us can really depend on a groom or the student preparing their horse without our checking each, each segment over. Um, we'd like to start with the, the leg wraps. We like to recommend that all four legs are bandaged properly. Today we have pro-choice boots over the top of the bandages. This is completely acceptable. Um, a lot of times if I have someone that's coming out for their first lesson, we want a double protection. I always have the back legs bandaged just so that if there's a backswing that accidentally would um, knock the horse's leg or, or an errant ball. And you'll also notice that we have uh, tail tape around the, the back bandages as well. We have the, the tail tied up. It can be uh, taped or tied. Uh, that way when the, when the student goes to swing, they're not going to get their mallet caught into the tail. I'd like to check all of the leather next on the horse. We want to ensure that when the horse comes out of the stall, that the stirrups irons are up. You want to really show the safety to your student when you're attacking these horses and always ask them to run the stirrup up when they're coming out of the stall or going back into the stall. We'd like to make sure that all of the stitching is good on the saddle. We want to ensure that you're using the first and the third billet. We want to ensure that you know that the the first and the second uh, billets are on the same piece of canvas and in, in case of a breakage you want to never have the girth buckled on the same too. So that's why you do the first and the third or the first and the second. You want to check your stitching. Make sure there's no buckles that are rubbing on the horse. Make sure that the girth isn't pinching. You want to really ensure that there's no girth sores underneath. If someone else tacked this horse up, say a groom or the student was advanced enough to tack the horse up, you want to make sure that nothing was overlooked. Want to double check the martingale. Want to make sure that it's not too tight or too loose for this particular horse. You want to make sure that your throat latch is a fist length or three fingers, some people like to say. For the cavison, two fingers underneath the cheekbone. You'll see the protruding cheekbone. You can make sure that it's hanging two, two fingers length down. If the horse has a drop nose band, you want to make sure that it's not too tight and it's not resting on the soft um, spot of the cartilage of the horse's nose. Next, we're going to make sure, since this horse is ha has a pelham, we're going to ensure that the curb chain isn't too loose or too tight. Um, recommended average is two fingers um, between the chin and the curb chain. Might want to see that it engages at 45 degrees when you pull back. You also have a lip strap uh, attached. That ensures that the curb chain stays on the sensitive part of the horse's chin groove. I think if you take all of these things in consideration before you have your rider mount, you're going to ensure the safety of everyone involved.
Next, we'd like to go to the rider safety. I see that Kylie has on her tall boots, which is the most recommended. You can wear half chaps and paddock boots. Any type of hard, uh, hard soled shoe with a heel is um, recommended so that the foot can't go through the stirrup. And we see that she has no dangling jewelry, no earrings, nothing that's going to get caught on anything as she's mounting. You might even ask if they have a, a, a belly piercing just to make sure that there's not going to be anything that goes wrong. That is something that can happen. You see that she has her knee guards on. They're fit tightly and in the, the, uh, the um, correct uh, height and for her legs. And next, let's look at her helmet. She has a proper helmet on, although we do see PI does like to recommend a helmet with a harness. And I do happen to have one. I recommend that each instructor uh, checks each rider's helmet, and at least until they get to know the, the student. And the first thing that I'm going to do is pull down on the, the brim of the helmet and check if it is loose enough that it touches the rider's bridge of their nose, then we know that it's too loose. This one is securely in place. The harness is uh, perfectly um, adjusted. If this rider accidentally fell off her horse and hit the ground, the helmet would not come off, as you would see in the other um, style helmets with just the, the chin um, piece. Um, also, this rider has her safety uh, glasses on. Uh, she chose not to have a face mask, and so that's another way to protect your, your eyes from um, an errant ball or mallet. Next, we'd like to do the safe mount. Before I introduce the um, mounting block to the rider and the horse, I'm, I'm going to make sure that the uh, stirrups are down, the stirrup irons are down, and that the girth is tight. If this was a novice um, student, we, I would be doing this for them, but we have Kylie who's a capable player. Um, Kylie, would you take your irons down, check your girth? You also want to make sure that the horse has seen a mounting block before. Um, we don't want to use anything that folds, a five gallon bucket, a water bucket, anything that could be dangerous that the horse could get their leg caught up in. This is, this is probably about as safe as you can get for a mounting block. All right. I'm going to hold this horse. I'm going to assist Kylie by holding this horse by the martingale strap. And as soon as she mounts, I'm going to remove the mounting block so that there's not, no opportunity for an accident. move the mounting block safely out of the way. If this was a newer rider, I would ensure that she had her reins um, properly in her hands. And this would be something that we would have already gone over in one of our preparation lessons before she even mounted. So you've now seen us demonstrate the mounting block mount. And if you do not have a mounting block, we're going to demonstrate the ground mount. In polo, there's times on the field where you had to dismount to pick up a whip or a mallet, a, a loose shoe, and now you're going to get up from the field. So we always like to teach a ground mount. 
For me to assist with the ground mount, I'm going to hold the martingale strap and I'm going to place pressure in the offside stirrup, which will help the rider mount. You can help the, uh, the rider find the stirrup on the offside, ensure that they have the reins how you'd like them. Ask them if they feel comfortable, if their stirrups are adjusted. Yep. Sounds good. Thank you for joining us today. We hope that all of these things will help you have a healthy and safe lesson program. Play safe, play smart, play polo.